G'day guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Parkitect. Today's episode is very all over the place, so I do apologize in advance. The work that I end up doing is pretty substantial. I end up doing a lot in this episode, but most of it is off camera. So you'll see me do a time lapse where I do all the detail work on the main street, which I think turns out really nice. So you'll see that in the time lapse. But then I do a big chunk of work off camera. Um, I recorded a bunch of it, which was in this time lapse, but I and actually end up deleting half the stuff that I end up building in this episode. Uh, not the stuff that you watch me build now. Um, I can give you a bit more of an ex an explanation when I uh, do a live play. So yeah, this time lapse only goes for about five minutes, and then I've got a lot of explaining to do. So yeah, I'm sorry. This live play will go just a little bit extra. Uh, because I just wanted to get this episode out regardless because it has honestly been a really big uh, It's been a really big build so it's probably one of the biggest episodes, but uh, Yeah, I'm not exactly happy with how this video is turning out But I'm really excited and really happy with how everything is starting to take shape in um, in two doll studios so it's kind of ridiculous that I do end up replacing where the hypercoaster goes uh, because it, this thing took me ages to build and I only just figured out where the pillars are sitting and you know all, doing all the supports and all the netting for this took ages so luckily I was able to use the same position for where the hypercoaster goes um, but I wanted to change where the main building sits because I, I was having a really hard time with where um, I was trying to place the station um, and I also felt like it didn't feel like a B&M hypercoaster and I really wanted it to have that feel to it. You know, I really wanted it to be, um, you know, follow the same sort of uh, layouts that B&Ms have. I wanted it to feel a little bit more like the Hollywood Dream Coaster from um, Universal Studios Japan. Whereas I felt like this was a little bit missing the mark. It also went in some locations that I didn't like and I didn't know how I was going to incorporate you know, moving forward within Two Doll Studio, so yeah, I ended up changing. I, I changed the entire roller coaster because I spent probably the entire day um, on Sunday after the live stream trying to trying to position the main entrance for the ride, and it just wasn't happening. And yeah, I'm I'm really glad that I ended up changing it because I'm so happy with how everything is turning out now. So you'll see that as well. <laughs> and I also deleted. The train line thinking that nobody was going to care that I deleted the train line and then um and then everyone cared that I was going to delete the train line so I ended up bringing it back so yeah I delete the train line and then I read all your comments saying please keep the train line so I was like oh okay crap <laughs> I better bring that back so uh yeah I had to basically copy and paste it and redo all this work that I did so yeah a lot of work guys I did a lot of work in this episode but not hugely impressed with how I think this is going to turn out so um, apologies for the video in advance but the work and the progress is pretty huge and I'm pretty excited to show you all the stuff that we get up to so I am doing a bit of detailing in the first bit uh, you saw me place down some Hollywood stars which I felt like was very important to get that Hollywood vibe going and I wanted to make the main street feel a little bit more lively a bit more busy so I decided to place down a couple of extra props so placing out a couple of extra lights and I also wanted to make the shop fronts look a little bit more uh, full because they looked empty because there was nothing inside it uh, funny that and yeah so I just placed down a couple of squares and cubes and and um, you know just bits and pieces just to make the inside of the shops just feel a little bit more alive and you know it's amazing what you can achieve just by placing down a couple of cubes uh, that's why I really love this game because you know you just sort of stick with the basics and you can achieve quite a lot of realism and then um, probably my favorite part of this time lapse is this little vendor that I created so uh, I wanted to have a couple of these little stands um, around the park and I just thought I'd place one here for the time being and um, see how it turns out this one's a little popcorn uh, vendor guy uh, and yeah I think, it's, I think it turns out pretty cute uh, I'll end up copying and pasting this into other areas of the park so and yeah I think I'll probably end up doing a couple more of them too and you can also see a couple of car props that I've placed down just to add a bit more to the street vibe that we're going for but um I mean the time lapse is over <laughs> it's pretty quick all right uh, sorry this this video sucks I'm, I, I do apologize but I do wanted to get a uh, I did want to get a park deck video out for you guys um, all right let's get into a live play and I've got a little bit of explaining to do 
So we have been working on the main streets in the time lapse. Everything is looking uh, a little bit more detailed. I do want to go through and add just more bits and pieces. But, uh, you know, people are going inside these shops because I have popped in a whole bunch of different shops within these, um, within the actual shop fronts. Uh, so, for instance, we would really need in some drinks. So we've made sure I've put some of them, some of them in and our... Uh, coffee shop is now selling some coffee and got a couple of information kiosks and stuff and we've also popped in just behind this really cool backstage area so uh, as you can see that drop that first drop has now disappeared because I really didn't like it there I just didn't think it you know it looked cool but it, it just wasn't realistic and there's some really weird transitions going on that um, I wasn't happy with but instead now we've got this whole backstage area that um, people going through this door here and they're actually able to access all the all the uh, shops behind here which is um, pretty cool they've just got this little area here just to go through which you know is is fine people don't like it but I like it so <laughs> tough luck uh, yeah so this is what we did in the time lapse but I've been doing so much off camera so originally I'm just going to show over here, originally, and I'm not going to show you what I built, but I had a uh, big studio over here, and I had the main entrance for that hyper coaster here, and that's why everyone's wandering around. I tried to collect most of them, but, you know, people are still miserable and walking around. But, uh, yeah, the main entrance entrance was here, and I was going for, like, a studio type of roller coaster, and it wasn't themed that well, and we just had rocks around. I don't know, I just didn't like it. So, I got rid of that, uh, and I also couldn't figure out a way of making the lift or the launch transition to where the uh, the first drop was so we've ended up moving the main station to over here now of course this is all under detailed and um, you know we still need to make all this more detailed and you know actually theme it and stuff but oh man this I'm so much happier so much more happier with where this is sitting uh, first of all I really love this diagonal lift hill love the steepness of this lift as well it's um, a bit more reminiscent of the hollywood dream coaster and the main drop i think is just so much cooler because it is right in the front of the park so people not only see the first airtime hill but they also see the drop and then all the other transitions and it just looks i'm just going to show you now it just looks more like a b&m hyper coaster there's still a couple of things that I'm going to change and fix up, but I'm pretty happy with the layout now. And there's also some really great interaction with the rest of the park. Whereas when I was coming over here, I didn't really know what else I was going to put around here. It really limited my, my, uh, the, you know, the rest of the development of the park. So I think it's just in a much better location. And I just want to show you a little bit. Can I please not go to that one? Thank you. So yes. Let me show you how it looks so far. This poor guy. I feel sorry for these guests. By the way, I'm not going to keep this safe. This is purely just to show you guys what I've been up to. So yeah, I just think that's a, a much more realistic first drop. Great airtime there. It's really great transition. I really love that, that turnaround. We've kept that flyby. And then we go into some more airtime hills. And they're just much smoother. Going along next to the pathway. Again, another turnaround. And then just goes into some small, lower airtime hills. And then we've got the brake run, which is on another diagonal bit of track. Which I really like the use of diagonal tracks within this, um, within this new layout. And then, uh, yeah, this is where the station's going to sit. Which is... A bit more of a central location for the for the for the ride which I think we needed and it just hugs the the park a little bit better I just think it's a much better looking ride a uh, couple of transitions I need to fix I think this one's pretty sharp but uh, this whole turnaround over here is just so smooth and I think interacts with this layout a little bit better than what I had before whereas before it snaked around what was a warehouse and it just didn't feel right and then it transitioned into this thing over here i just didn't like it so i'm really happy with this now i think it looks way better 
Uh, would you believe that I had to change a fair bit of the netting, unfortunately, but, you know, it's been done. I've fixed it. It's there. Uh, so, that's it. That's the, that's the new ride. And that took me all Sunday. <laughs> I'm not joking, it really did. It took me ages. It just took such a long time, but uh, I just think it's going to look so much better. And then the build in the next episode is just, it's pretty great. So yeah, I uh, look forward to that. Um, some other things that I've changed is I've finally updated the pathing in the main entrance, which I think looks a little bit better. Um, I've also made the planters a little bit more symmetrical with the main gate, which I think was something that we definitely needed. I've also added in these little benches too, where people can sit down. Obviously they can't sit down, but you know, we'll just pretend that they can. And it also means that I can add these curbs so that they're not able to walk through the planters, which I absolutely hated before. Added a couple of decals around here, but generally I like this pattern a lot better than what I was going for before. And like I said in the time lapse, I deleted this whole train line thinking none of you guys were going to care, but all of you guys cared, so I had to bring it back. And yeah, that took a while too. But we compromised, I just shoved it over a little bit, and rather than it connecting directly up, ignore this guy. Rather than linking directly up to this guy, it's um, instead a uh, you know industrial train line that goes next to the train station. So this train station was obviously a more recent development with the addition of this commercial district, whereas this industrial train line would probably still see a lot of industry coming in and out. So yeah, we got a little bit more space over here, which I think is a little bit more realistic and adds a better transition. And again, we're fixing up all this in the next episode. But yeah, I just think it just... I think you guys are right. I think this train line's great. I'm really glad I listened to you guys and we kept it because I think it I think it definitely adds to the park, the uniqueness of the park. You see that? We need to fix that. Um, but what what else? I think that's it. I think I've been doing a lot of stuff off camera. Obviously you've, you just you saw that. I didn't want you to see that, but you saw it. Uh, look, I I just had I had to. I I had to get some cash to basically place this back down because I had to blueprint it and <laughs> we needed cash and unfortunately I don't think we're making any more money because obviously we have to charge people to come into the park not charging per ride so this is actually a really challenging challenging scenario and I'm having a really hard time making a profit and trying to make something somewhat realistic so yeah a lot of stuff behind the scenes but uh yeah I am really enjoying it and I hope you guys are too and thank you all so much for your feedback in the last episode I do really appreciate that um, but guys, that is it. It's a weird episode. I'm sorry, but uh, I will be back with better content next episode. I promise the next episode is going to be pretty good. I want to give a special shout out to some of my patrons like Robert Murick, Damien, Joel Picaro, Nicholas French, and Dexter Bats. Thank you guys very much for supporting the channel and thank you all for watching. Very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!